Hot D. Hot. I don't know who I don't know who came up with to say it that way, but that's definitely the best way to say it. I so, definitely uh, yeah. did not know anybody was saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I did not think of House of the Dragon when you say Hot D. I, I guess I, I wish I could give whoever came up with it credit uh, because whoever I mean, you are, great job. Yes. <laughs> House of the Dragon, we're covering two episodes tonight, uh, three and four. We'll probably kind of uh, mix them up a little bit here, but um, mm -hmm. try to cover them thoroughly, give our thoughts. We've been enjoying the series thus far. Um, mm -hmm. We had a uh, bigger time jump, if I recall now, um, mm -hmm. in episode three. So three, two years, two years, three years. Yeah. It, it's, uh, Aegon's second name day, but I guess it would be three years because you have to give her time to be pregnant with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So three yep. years. So yeah, that's a bit. Lots yeah. could potentially happen there. Um, we, let's see, we get, so things going on that are, are problems or whatever. I guess everything going on is a problem, it seems like. Um, we've got the Stepstones. And um, Matt Smith is still dealing with that. I got, I got to say, I loved that opening. I just, the, the agony that the crab feeder was inflicting on the step zones is just, I mean, it just brings you right in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's no like exposition. It's just like opening, like pain, fire, battle, like urgency. Yeah. You know, everything is just like, it's new. It's now it's, you know, visceral. Yep. I just really, I just really enjoy it. Yeah. I wrote down sweet dragon scene because definitely it was the yeah. torture and the dragon comes in and, yeah. and they, I think did a fair job of like setting up how this, cause you think, okay, got dragons. They're like nukes, you know, you, yeah. you have this power over everyone and stuff, but they're setting up ways that they're not all powerful, that they can right. be um, thwarted even though you're, you know, the, the adversary has dragons. And so right. like this setup here, basically of cave system where you can go out and you like have all these people on the shore, but you can quickly retreat into a cave system. Right. And the dragon can't reach you. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it was, it was great. Yeah. Like you said, just to sort of like explain like how you would thwart a dragon, like caves avoid dragon fire. And then you quickly rush out when the dragon is, you know, you think it's empty and quick rush out with a volley of arrows. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very effective. Yep. I yep. mean, even if you don't get the dragon, you know, we saw Matt Smith get hit. So you, mm -hmm. if you incapacitate the rider enough, like, I mean, I don't know. We haven't fully explained like every way that dragons and riders are linked, but it sort yeah. of seemed like, you know, Caraxes could feel that uh, Matt Smith was injured and reacted mm -hmm. to that. So, you know, there's something there. Yep. Yep. Um, He's saying Matt Smith. I should say Damon. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so tempting. He's just I like one of those guys. A lot of names, like, so. Yeah. It's just so tempting to just go back to Matt Smith. Yep. Um, so we got that going on. And then we're, we're dealing with a lot of, uh, you know, the, the, the family struggles, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Princess, uh, Rhaenyras, Rhaenyras, Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra. Um, see, so yeah, I can't, the names, I don't know. Um, she is not handling well her situation, you know, and yeah. every, a lot of people are obviously in positions they don't want to be in. And, uh, that includes her for sure. And she's worried about, you know, being usurped for passed up for her spot on the throne. Mm -hmm. And um, we got a lot of people at play to uh, try to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Her dad wants her to marry off. Um, and um, just kind of just frustrated with the whole thing. Hey, let's get this big thing together and celebrate yeah. my, uh, my replacement's birthday, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I wrote down Viserys priorities as always let's go on a hunt versus dealing with the mess that is the step zones like mm -hmm. let's have a tourney when we you know are, are uh you know potentially dealing with the death of a queen because she's mm -hmm. you know forced into this childbirth like always got them priorities um 
so yeah, so I I really enjoy the like family dynamics here that were coming out to play. Um, I mean, obviously everybody knows why Rhaenyra is frustrated. We know why Viserys is happy. It's super obvious that he's like thrilled that he finally has a son. He's in love with Alicent. She seems pretty like settled into her role as queen and and sort of yeah. you know taking advantage of what that has to offer. Um, on the flip side of that. She is the character, I guess the High Towers as a pair are the characters that aggravated me the most in this particular episode. Okay. Allison for her like absolute naivete in which she's like, Rhaenyra, why are you acting this way? Like, why are you upset? I want us to be a family. And Rhaenyra's like, you really can't understand why I'm upset about things. And like, I mean, I give props to Allison for trying, but also, like, mm -hmm. come on. Like, you don't really know why she's mad. Like, mm -hmm. you really don't know. Like, even if even if you think she should get over it, like, you can't pretend like you don't know why she is right. mad. Yep. So that was particularly aggravating to me. Um, and then Otto's, um, you know, ever pushing forward, I thought, you know, uh, in his own like house advancement i was annoyed you know from the start when he like pushed allison at viserys seems to have worked out and that's really nice doesn't mean it isn't gross um and that he isn't jockeying for position and power and then here when he like constantly pushes 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 and pretends like the only solution to everything is you know Aegon being on the throne it's like again that just like absolute naked ambition is tiresome yeah um and it's just like a little bit much for me right now. Mm -hmm. So the, those two, for very different reasons, were kind of the uh, eye roll for me of the episodes. I mean, how much is Otto going to be right, though? Is like I can see him being, I can see it in his mind, like, look, this is a win win. This is a win for the kingdom, and this is a win for my family and our name. Because I'll have blood on the throne and yeah. we don't know how he'll be, but he'll be a dude and we have less, less chance of war. So it's like, we yes. can, I can sell this as I am in service of the realm mm -hmm. and a side bonus. My family sits on the throne, you know? Yeah. I, yeah. And to me, those feel like 60, 40, like bonus mm -hmm. for me, like, side bonus is the realm um so i very much like i get why otto would push it's totally natural um you know for for a man of his ambition right um and and like viserys comments in this in the second of the pair of episodes that we watched he's like no man has ever served on my small council or in my kingdom in any position and not had self-interest i get it like right. people are self-interested um but it's just, it's a lot. And Otto pretends like this way is the only way. And it's like, yeah, it's, you're making the case too hard here and you're pushing mm -hmm. too hard. And he got the first, um, you know, kind of slap back from Viserys when he, he made the giant misstep of suggesting that we work this all out. And Rhaenyra just marries her half brother. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way that Viserys looked at him in that moment, I was like, this is the start of a serious fracture right here. Yep. There, that was a serious misstep. Um, and I think it was compounded by the previous misstep of uh, Jason Lannister in assuming mm, that yeah, yeah. also that, you know, Rhaenyra was going to be passed over and that Aegon was going to be, you know, named the heir. I think a lot of that, like, assumption pushed Viserys the real wrong way. Yep. Yep. I liked his little speech to, uh, to Rhaenyra as well. Like, yeah. I wavered, um, but yeah. I am resolute now. You know, I liked that openness yeah. about it. Um, I did and too. I think... I think ha ha Otto would ring a little, he'd have a little more credibility to stand on if he hadn't been the one to immediately set up his daughter with the kid. Absolutely. If that had just happened naturally without yep. his influence or something like that, it just happened to be, um, or if he had decided to marry the kid, uh, Valerian, 
Mm -hmm. then and they had a, a son and then he encouraged the same thing right both situations he'd have more to stand on but in this it's very it looks very much like you were hoping for this the entire time and yeah. played an active role in trying to achieve it so right yeah, he's he's pushing real hard in a lot of directions. He's pushing Allison and he's pushing the king and it just looks it reeks too much of naked ambition to be just like non-biased solid advice. Um yep. which which Viserys gets from his other guy on the small council who I'm just like absolutely falling more in love with. I know, and right? Like, yeah. I can't remember his name even. And I, I don't feel know terrible. His name. Like, I don't know what house. I didn't know. Right. Right. He even <laughs> says it. Cause he's like, I, you know, I'm in a small house and, you know, I, I have no ambitions to like grow higher than, you know, my position on the small council. And then he just like proceeds to just lay out some super solid advice for Viserys. Yep. Every time. And he just crushes it. So. Yep. Yeah. This, that is who Otto could be if he hadn't tossed Allison at Viserys right away. Yeah. Um, and so then the big thing comes from this that we, um, you know, we have the hunting thing. We have uh, oh Rhaenyra like <laughs> bonding with the, um, with uh, what's his name? I added to the list. Sir Kristen. Yep. Sir, Sir Kristen, Kristen. She's pr he's protecting her and like, hey, please come back to camp. Can we do that? And uh, it doesn't work out, but they bring back a boar. So yep. that stuff is all nice. A little, um, she worked out a little aggression. Stuff. It felt like, <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, um, we ultimately realize, okay, we're going to have, uh, the, the King is going to send help to, um, Damon. There's Damon on the screen right there. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so to, to linger on the hunt for just a moment, because I mm -hmm. said we had to talk about it earlier. The hunt gave me a serious Robert Baratheon vibes, and I was yes. tensed the whole time. <laughs> that would be too much if they like. I know, I know, that. I know. But, but yeah. I was like, something. It it might not be that, but something because I mean, Viserys was in his cups. He was mm -hmm. drunk. Yes, and they kept being like, "Oh, sire, your prize is near. Like we've got eyes on your prize." And I was like, "Please stop saying the word prize. It's really freaking me out." Um, and you know, they just kept being like, oh, we're, you know, we're setting it up. We're cornering it for you. And I was like, so clearly, you know, they don't think he can do any actual hunting, which I mean, right. in his inebriated state, he could not, mm -hmm. but it was just so like metaphoric of the way that Viserys is constantly being handled by everybody around right. him and told what his goal is or what he should be focusing on or like right. what's important um, so I loved the hunt in that sense. And then, yeah, the entire time I had this like horrible sense of foreboding that there was going to be some tragic hunting accident. Mm -hmm. Um, and luckily that was not the case, but just the entire time they played it well to just give you that, like, mm -hmm. remember when Robert was deep in his cups Here's and decided spear to go too. egg yeah. hunting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oof. Yeah. I, I mean, two things. I think one, I can definitely see these sort of ceremonial, like you say, pomp and circumstance kind of hunts, very just like symbolic. Yeah. I can see it happening this way yeah. because I'm like, this is no hunting. You just have a no. party of people and dogs and stuff like other you know, people and trap something. An and then, yeah. yeah, then you get to just stab it. Ugh, um, was, but I can gross. see that being the case, you know, or that happening at some point in time. And then um, the uh, how great would it be to watch this and then go through Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. having not seen it, and see a similar situation, and then oh shit, you know, right? Yeah, yeah, and then so. just be like, oh, this did not turn out well at yeah. all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. Hunt was interesting, whole camping thing. Um, the uh, awkward Lannister set up talking to I Rhaenyra. love how smooth he thought he was, and he was <laughs> not. It was great. It was great to just watch, like, 
the absolute confidence that he is just like winning this, taking this prize home, and then to just see it like wiped away. <laughs> By Rhaenyra and by Viserys. Like, both of them were like, mm. Yep. Yep. Um, oh, yeah. So, Damon on the... Mm-hmm. He, he is... Uh, forces are demoralized. He is mm-hmm. not... Uh, he is not winning here. And they have a the- horrible war council with no good advice and just pessimism. Yep. Mm-hmm. I was, you know, it was interesting because he gets a letter from the king. The king decides, all right, I'm going to send help. Mm-hmm. And he freaks out and bashes his helmet against the guy, the me- kill the messenger, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I was expecting him to turn around and give some sort of motivational speech, like rally the troops. Mm-hmm. Like, this is the thing I, I we're going to, you know, did not see this coming. Yeah. Um, so he instead goes in on basically a kamikaze mission to yeah. uh um like i'm gonna take down this crab guy or or else or i'm don't going yeah. down um yeah i i actually did see that coming i okay. i very much knew that viserys's letter was going to push him the exact wrong way to just be like i don't need your help i can do mm-hmm. it myself it's very like spoiled younger brother tantrumy like i could do mm-hmm. it i could do it so, yeah, I mean, basically, I, I don't remember which, which councilman it was who had, like, suggested that Damon would be perfect to set up a trap for this. Basically just was, like, gifted that scenario when Viserys sent in the messenger to be like, I'm going to help you. Because mm-hmm. yep. he was talking before, like, how are we ever going to get Damon to just, like, agree to just walk in there? Mm-hmm. Here you go. Yep. Yeah, I thought it was a really cool scene. I thought it was well done. I'm... I was a little, Ashley and I were talking. It's like, okay, he needs to not be missed by all these arrows. And then he does start getting comment? I said, uh, okay, are these archers stormtroopers or what? They can't hit uh, him at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, yep. this is a little unbelievable. And then he finally got hit. And I was like, oh, now he looks like Boromir. And now I'm sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, oh. um, the, the, honestly this is the more realistic thing in a way because mm-hmm. some t- a lot of times everybody's legolas all of a sudden when they want to be you right. know it's like 80 yards and they're just like running boom right you know we can yeah. shoot our, hit our target whenever we feel like it they're up on the cliff they're shooting down at him running this is you know i know it's a lot of arrows but still and he did eventually get hit so yeah yeah but, yeah, um, the uh, the more surprising thing to me about this scene was was that uh, Damon was willing to give up his dragon and let uh, Lanor ride him. I think his name's Lanor. Lanor. Okay, so this is that, the thing. That to me was like, wow. Well, okay, this is the third episode, and mm-hmm. in this is the third time in a row in the post credit conversations i feel like we've had contradicting information or at least something told in a way that i did not read it in the show mm-hmm. and i read this in the show as this was a plan mm-hmm. that okay this is what's going to happen we're i'm going in i'm going going nuts they're going to think that i'm surrendering it's not going to happen and i'm going to mm-hmm. make a dash for it and get this crab gang guy and that's what's mm-hmm. what's going to happen. It's going to and when I don't surrender and I attack, that's your sign to come charging in and come in with the dragons. And we mm-hmm. we've lured once we've lured them out, basically, yeah. um, they're in the open, torch them, and that's. So I was like, okay, that makes it's a plan. So yeah. In af- the after credits, they made it seem like he was literally going in to die, like he was going to go in. And it was lucky that his people showed up on time to save him. Well, uh, I mean, technically, yeah, it is because a lot of that plan hinges on timing. Yeah. You know, I mean, there, there is obviously. But they said like, he was staying there facing ready for his death. Like when he was there and surrounded, he had just taken shelter in that for a little bit. He's like, he is ready to die. 
Yeah. And that's how devoted he is to like not accepting his brother's help. He's going to die here for this because he couldn't make it all the way. He couldn't get to the to the crab game. So, I mean, yes and no. I see where that in the moment would be the case if he was like, if our plan didn't work out, the timing's not going to work, I didn't make it, I'm ready to die here. I totally accept that Damon would think that's a possibility of this plan because th the way that the war council like laid it out, they were like, it's a suicide mission. Right. With, like this one glimmer of a chance of success. So he could absolutely think that, but also at the same time, the plan is hopefully to get him out. And yeah. hopefully show up in time and hopefully be the cavalry yeah. so that we can make sure to get the crab feeder. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so I guess both and, but I don't love the afterward maybe implying that, like, the plan wasn't fully thought out and that he was just going in there solely to die. Because I, I kind of want to watch it again. Possibility, Yeah, and I didn't see the afterward for this one, so that, that makes it difficult for me to, like, interpret mm -hmm. any kind of, you know, tone or meaning or something like that but yeah mm -hmm. yeah just to imply that it's like straight up you know it's only a suicide mission i don't think damon would have taken that right yeah i don't know i'm just i'm getting to the point where i always i've always liked listening to a little after credit thing a little behind the scenes you know something like that but i felt so uh, every time now it's it's just there's something at the end where Someone is conflicting what another thing says or conflicting what the show seems to say. Sure. And it's mm -hmm. that's like the been my biggest problem with the show so far. It's really weird. So it's yeah, uh, I almost don't want to watch him, but yeah. Yeah. That's fair, I think. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, I was distracted I, by a pug. I said I missed probably an important line because I was distracted by a pug. Um <laughs> That's um we we honestly rewound that three different times just to catch that Rhaenyra tell the old lady, what have you done to serve the realm? Eat cake. Because we we both mm. Chris and I both thought it was like a super important line that she said. We kept missing it. And then it was like that was uneventful. Mm -hmm. But the pug was cute. Yeah. <laughs> my my issue with this episode, I guess, stemmed from just like I was a little drained of, I mean, it's not an issue with the episode, just like the, the character stuff that was drawing me in and getting my attention. was like, if this amount of time has passed, I wish that Rhaenyra would be, would have like, would be trying to, would have accepted who she is and her situation a little more and like mm -hmm. been working to show people that she deserves to be the queen that she yeah. deserves to take the throne. And so that means being respectable. It means like serving functions you can. That means like reaching out to people and forming relationships and all this stuff or whatever. And she's just not. And I guess we're seeing yeah. in this, we're seeing her on a day where things are being brought up that are obviously going to be bothersome to her. You know, she's got, again, someone that might take her place now. And so she's more upset. But mm -hmm. that was like one of my big takeaways from the episode was was just that like you're not doing yourself any favors at this point if you yeah. want to be seen as you'll be the suitable um heir mm -hmm. so yeah i completely agree with you rhaenyra does not make a case for herself she's like pouty and flippant and it's hard to to um you know like f for the viewer obviously like a week has passed since the last episode. So it's like understandable in our time that yeah. she would be that, you know, bitter about it still after like a week. But right. when you have to buy into the show's reality of three years forward, it's, it's hard that she hasn't made any progress in three years. And I right. get it. There's a lot of like circumstantial things. Like clearly everybody has just like assumed her only value is being married off. Um, mm -hmm. Because she's not going to be the heir and Aegon's going to be named heir. Um, and everybody's just like so certain of this. And Viserys clearly has done nothing like concrete to dispel that. So I get her like level of frustration. I get her like resentment towards Alicent, both for like the surprise. Hey, my, you're betting my father and now you're having his babies. And also the like sweet naivete of like, let's just be a happy family. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, it's it's frustrating that she's clearly done nothing to address any of that. Yep. In the in yep. the intervening time. Mm -hmm. Well, um, feeding off of that, and we're probably running a little long, but we got one more episode to talk about. Episode four. Wait, um, wait. feeding off of oh. that, crab feeder does <laughs> die at the end of the episode. Yeah, I'm were still sad we didn't see the fight. Yeah, I was a little surprised you know? that that's how it ended. Like on the one mm -hmm. hand, he seemed intriguing, and like I said, I love these like, you know, yeah. just like visceral openings on the step zones, um, and seeing the conflict there. So I kind of wasn't ready for him to die. And on the other hand, like. Thanks for not dragging it out, I guess. He feels a little like Darth Maul, you know? Yeah. Really kind of. cool looking, kind of bad. He comes from nowhere. He's silent. We don't know much right. about him. Cool and then mask, he's cut in cool half. Face. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> there it is. Done. <laughs> yep. I mean, maybe he's going to come back with robot legs. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So. It was just, it was a little surprising to me, like just the buildup that had been happening. And then he was like gone. Yep. So. Yep. But but like I said, at least we didn't have to like drag it out over like episode after episode and like never really get anywhere. Yep. So, well, episode right. four is very interesting. Um, it's uh, a lot happens. I would say where I, where I was thinking was what Rhaenyra maybe needs is to understand that yes, there's a lot of things that you can't do, but you have so many more things that you can do like everybody has a different element that makes them a little more free. Like she's expressed to, um, her night here. Uh, sure, Kristen. yeah. Kristen, that at least you get to have a choice in who you, you know, whatever. It's like, okay, right. But you have bath water drawn for you and can be bathed by servants. And like you all have different, um, benefits to your situation mm -hmm. and your status. And I thought yeah. maybe um, Damon was going to kind of show her a little bit of the underworld, a little bit of like something else. That, that's where my mind went. It's like, maybe she's going to see a little bit of like how other people have it. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a little bit of a wake up. Like I kind of maybe don't have it so bad, you mm -hmm. know? Um, that yeah. wasn't where we went <laughs> with that. No, that's but... not where we went. <laughs> I, yeah, I I definitely considered that as one of the possibilities when, you know, Damon takes Rhaenyra on their, like, midnight jaunt into the city. Um, but I actually thought Allison pointed it out to Rhaenyra better um, in the sense of, you know, Rhaenyra's complaining, like, I have all these suitors, but they're not interested in me. They're just interested in, like, my bloodline and me giving them children. And Allison is like, yeah, but a lot of noble women have the same thing and at least you get choices. Like yep. she's clearly referring to herself in the fact that like she really feels now that the bloom is worn off the rose and yep. Otto forced her into this relationship and she cares for Viserys, but that's not love. It's not being in love. Sure. Um. So, you know, she's just kind of like bringing up her own situation, but she really could be talking about, you know, any one of the noble women in in the seven kingdoms. I mean, yeah. you know, how often do, do women get a choice of their husbands? So she's like, listen, you might have limited choices, but you have choices. Yep. Or, so. or a farmer's daughter might be the same thing, you know, right, like exactly. you don't know how, how that goes. So, right, right. Hey, father comes home one day, like, Oh, I got a plot of land in exchange for you marrying their son. I got, mm. you know, 12 yep. goats or whatever, like have fun. Yep. yep. So, yeah, at least at least Viserys is giving her the space to like pick somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, no, that's a good point. That was a it was a good moment between the two. I was happy that they were getting a little closer again. Yeah, even after like Rhaenyra really burned her and yeah. they, like handled it well. I forget what yeah. the line was, but it was yeah something with like just having to, you know. Oh yeah, pump out babies or something, you know. Yeah, I, can you imagine being trapped in a castle and just pumping out babies? Yeah, and, and Allison like, was just like, "That's my life." <laughs> it's like, thanks, <laughs> wow, these. Yeah, think of me. Yeah, but then Damon earlier, then too, he said, uh, "I wrote a couple quotes because I liked him." He said, yeah. "There are worse things to be sold for," which is a hundred percent. Like uh, that could be. Oh yeah, when when yeah. He, she's talking about her father selling her for the most powerful. Mm -hmm like castle and the most powerful army or whatever. Yeah. Yep. And then you can't live in fear or, uh, forsake the, you can't live in fear 
you can't live your life in or fear. you forsake the best parts of it yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep, yep. like that yes uh i did i did very much enjoy that exchange between rhaenyra and damon um not only for like the way that damon somehow was just like throwing out wisdom like yeah. skittles candy uh, but he also had some good jabs at his wife about like oof like we couldn't have kids kids can't grow in a hostile environment yeah. it's just like oh that is a sick burn yeah he's not even there to defend herself i know i, I, I want to meet this woman i really you know? do too i really do too she's, uh, i bet I she's just, lovely i bet she's lovely it's just something i, I bet she's not bad or real Dude, firecracker or something yeah like really forceful yeah just it just like has a strong personality but damon's like i don't want that like we all know mm -hmm. what he wants now after this episode he made well, it quite clear and i thought and i thought honestly he was playing a long game when he came back because he came back like so full of you know, pomp and circumstance, and they call me the king of the narrow yeah, yeah. sea, but I know that you're the true king. And I was like, right. where is this, like, reasonable, logical Damon Ben? He's got to be playing a long game. And it turns out he was. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that he thought it all through, but mm. you could definitely tell he wasn't just there, as he said, because he missed the comforts of home. Right. You know, even Rhaenyra saw right through that BS and was like, you never liked this place. Mm -hmm. There's something else. And then after the uh, the midnight jaunt that turned into the almost midnight tryst, yeah. um, which I felt like I saw coming based on like the heavy flirting conversations they had, but I didn't really know that they were going to go there. Um, yeah. Okay, that so this, yeah, we definitely this, have to talk this, about it. Let's talk yeah, about this, the whole this, thing. This was an episode. This was a lot happening in this episode, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. a lot of like character movement, a lot of plot movement, and a lot of like potential three dimensional chess happening, or also like things stumbling into working out. I I don't think anything is going to stumble into working out. I don't know. I think I think maybe maybe yeah. It's you know <laughs> yeah. I so okay. So, yes, Midnight Jaunt, we've, Ashley and I both said from the beginning, it's like, they seem close, you know, he gave yeah. her the necklace, you know, and stuff, which, okay, but, you know, just like things add up or whatever. And um, I honestly, they, I know they're related, but they kind of feel like a reasonable match. Um, they do because they're Targaryens. Mm hmm Yeah. I mean, it, it's. It's honestly, okay, I'm going to side note something. One of the things that really bothered me this episode was Otto Hightower pretending like the thought of Damon and Rhaenyra was just unconscionable yes. when he's the one in the previous episode who was like, why does Rhaenyra marry her half-brother? Mm -hmm. It was like, come on. Yeah. Like, you cannot pretend like, <gasps> terrible. Yeah, right. Yep. So, because they are Targaryens and like, and then like Allison being like, oh, you can't do this. I know you're weird Targaryens, but no. And I was like, yeah, yeah they're Targaryens. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't have to be cool with it in theory, but if they are in this world and their rules dictate that that's fine, then I don't think like other characters in this world have the right to be shocked at it. Right. Okay, and this episode, did you see the post credit scene? I did, yeah. Okay. How did you read Dame? So they're in the, what do they call it? They call it the, like... Oh, right. What's the, like, uh... It's, you know, it's not a whorehouse. It's like the... Brothel? Sex pit, you know, or what? It's, it's some term sex. that they use. The brothel, yeah. Yeah. The orgy, so, basically. Yeah. So first it's like, okay, what, like, what's the point here? Where are you bringing her? Why? You know, this is, yeah. odd. This is odd. What's going to happen? So then when, when it became more clear, okay. But then he tries to, it doesn't let her kiss him anymore. And then kind of gets angry and leaves. Mm -hmm. How did you read that? What do you think 
the goal, intentions, all that stuff. Wait. Yeah. Yeah, I had a hard time reading the, like this whole scene. I was constantly guessing as to Damon's motives. You know, I like wrote down when they first started going out, like, is this a flirting thing? Like, are they just like escaping for some fun together? Is he teaching her like, you know, a lesson as her uncle? Like, like you said earlier, this is how the poor people live. And this is like the real life at King's Landing. Right. Um, are we, are we pressing her to find out any vulnerabilities? And if she gets spooked by anything, um, you know, is he opening her eyes? Is he testing her limits? Like to see what she can take and what she, you know, finds unconscionable. Is she trying to drag her into some like, you know, disreputable scenario? Like I was constantly yeah. just like, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. Um, but so the way that I read this is Damon and Rhaenyra both get swept up in the moment of, you know, we're out in the town, we're having They've fun, been drinking. we're drinking. Yep. Um, and Damon does want to test her limits and does want to see how far she'll go. And so he takes her to the brothel and it's just like, you know, guising it in the like, you know, marriage doesn't have to just be awful and sex doesn't have to be awful. It can be great, hmm. you know, and he's kind of like pushing her for a reaction. And when when it's positive, I think that's the moment that like drunk Damon decides to act on some feelings that he's hinted at before and other characters have hinted at before. Um I think Missaria is is the name of his madam oh, prostitute, okay. you know, the, the, his lady right. on the side. Um when before, you know, they were they were having sex, and I think in like the very opening uh episode of the series and she's like, I could go get a white haired girl if you want to, kind of like hinting that mm. You know, yep. Damon does yeah. have like feelings for Rhaenyra. Yeah. yeah. So I think Damon got swept up in the moment. Um, and then sort of at the very last minute was just sort of like, ah, I can't, I not here, not not right here. And if if he didn't stop himself right there, he was going to take Rhaenyra. And I and not that I don't think that he doesn't want to because he's made clear that he does. I just think there was the wrong place, wrong time. He ha you think he has made it clear? I think it's clear like in his like thoughts, like actions, like things that he said before in their like flirty conversations, he is he is not opposed to this. And I'm I'm banking a lot on like that statement of Missarias, where you know she's like you you're clearly not enjoying what we're doing right. so i'll go get you a white-haired girl so i just sort of feel like that's a tell so i think he's into it so i love what you're saying <clears throat> on the record i like this interpretation <laughs> what I don't like is what seems to be the director's interpretation at the <laughs> end of the episode. Okay, so she seems to suggest that Damon is all about control. And once she is into it, she has nothing to offer him anymore. And so he's out. And so to me that like, then I think back, okay, he was with that one hooker and not into it. You know, the moment we're referencing, I can get someone else. Is it like, because then my mind went to like, he can't, he he's not excited if he's not like basically raping someone. He has to like be, yeah. you know, he has to be dominating someone so, physically in that sense. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like the ultimate thrill of the chase and thrill of the conquest. Like once mm -hmm. you know you have somebody's interest, it's boring. But would he and, do that with his right? Niece? Right. So here's, yeah, here's, here's my problem with that is like, first of all, I don't think Damon's, I mean, I think he likes the control and I think he likes throwing Rhaenyra um, and pushing her limits and like seeing what's going to happen and how far yeah. she'll go. Absolutely think he loves that part of control, but I don't think that he is ever foolish enough for those like 2.5 seconds in which they are seeming like this is going to really go somewhere and she is into it that he thinks I have her under my control now. That's that's way too fast and that's way too 
complex a thought for his drunk mind to be like, got her, done. Yep. Because I just don't think that he would think I've got her, it's done until they actually went through and had sex. Right. Right. That makes sense. That makes sense to me. Do you see, do you see what I'm, my problem with these post credit yeah. things? Yeah. You know, it keeps happening um, because I, I agree with what you're saying. It makes more sense. Like you just can't go through it in that moment. It's something probably you thought about a long time. It's maybe a reason why he is unsatisfied with his wife and like, it's just not working out. Like it maybe is a thing like that. Um, and just decides in the moment, like it's not, and it's maybe a little shocked that she's as into it. Right. Um, Could take and, be taking him by surprise. Like he thought yeah. he'd have to work at him a little more. more yeah. Yeah. I mean, people, people honestly, you know, have very strange reactions to getting the thing that they want. And sometimes yes. it's like, I can't actually be getting this right now. Yep. Like it's not actually happening or like just that, you know, especially, especially when he's drunk, like you don't always have yeah. like the most logical reactions to things or you don't like process things that are happening to you. So yep. it's, I think absolutely conceivable that he's just like, what? I, what I can't do this right here, right now. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of things happening. Yep. So then, so um, it works out for him that he's like, even the appearance of, you know, they don't actually go through with it, but the appearance yeah. of it works out a lot in his favor or almost um, does almost does. Well, so it, it's weird because then we have, both involved parties here going out and telling hardcore half truths. Yes. Because Allison. Technical in, truths. Technical yeah, truths. Kind, kind of. <laughs> I, Allison questions Rhaenyra, um, pretty upset about it. And, but she asked, this is what I didn't like. And I thought this is a mistake. Rhaenyra yeah. says, on my mother's memories, mm -hmm. he didn't touch me, he did touch you. He yes. didn't have sex yes. with you, but he absolutely right. touched you. Right, right. So, I was mad at that too. I was like, uh, like you really could have just been like, he did not have sex with me. And like, yes. And that would have been the full truth there. and it would have left out some details, but it would right. have been true. So she, she tells a pretty good, like convincing 75% truth up to that point. Yeah. Yep. Just the like, on, out, on, get his right. freedom he's, here, you know, he's keeping his cups. He wants to keep going. Like she leaves mm -hmm. out, but she also wants to keep going. But yeah, I mean, she definitely wasn't like, this is my idea to go to a brothel. Like that right. is Damon. And she's like, he's my escort out. We're having fun. Yeah, I'll follow him. And then suddenly yep. we're in a brothel. So like 75% truth quickly downgrades to like half truth. Yep. And then Damon goes and he doesn't deny it. Yeah. He's confronted by the king and he's like, well, better me than someone else. Right. And, uh, and this is where I thought like maybe he's playing that long game. Yeah. You know? See, that's that's the hint that maybe he is was like wanted this to happen and was setting it up. Or mm -hmm. was this kind of what happened? And now he's just playing into it. Either way, I would believe it. If he mm -hmm. like came back and and did all that like smooth talking in the beginning because he wanted something like this to happen and he like kind of set it up in the hopes that would totally buy it mm -hmm. because it would make a lot of sense to me why he was so like agreeable and submissive in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, if this just like he kind of just was coming back, thought you know I'll play, you know humble king and maybe see what I can get, and then it just fell into his lap. Also would believe it. Yep. Yep. To me, to me, the the why behind doesn't matter as much as like I still feel like this is Damon's end goal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. So, of this episode, there were th three things that bother me. Um. Not again. Not in like quality of the show or something. It's just like I just. It was so. Sure. Let's one. See if yours match up with mine. One being. Um, her swearing on her mother's memories cover that mm -hmm. one. The second one, um, is Rhaenyra then deciding I'm just going to jump Ooh, Sir Kristen's yeah. bones. 
hated it. It's like, no, this does not it. look good, you know? And um, I, I'm like, you're just going to get this guy like, executed maybe or something, yeah. you know? Yeah, like, no, I, this didn't, is... I didn't love that at all. So No, that... I wanted, I liked them as friends. Mm -hmm. um, and I liked for him that he was so proud of getting into the Kingsguard. And he's like, I'm bringing honor to my house that like no one could have ever dreamed of. And here she is just like kind of shitting all over that mm -hmm. and just being like, I'd really love to sleep with you right now. Cause I'm all worked up from Damon. Yeah. You're right here and we do have a relationship and now I'm just going to like capitalize. Yep. Didn't look, hated it. No. It's not unrealistic, <clears throat> you know, no, but that's a no. lot of my things. It's like, that's why I don't have a problem with the show. It's like these, they make sense. I just wish it, the character had had the fortitude to make another choice. Same here. Same here. Um, and my third thing is, again, not unrealistic, but I was hoping for more from the character. I was hoping for, because Allison has shown a maturity uh, mm -hmm. that, you know, that her friend here, Rhaenyra, hasn't. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, I, it took me by surprise the beats in this episode to contrast like Rhaenyra, like having fun and stuff like that. And then the dutifulness of mm -hmm. Alicent and like mm -hmm. that weighing on her and stuff, because the episode previous, she'd like, you know, as we talked before, like she's feel like she'd settle into her role. Mm -hmm. She really does care for the King. Mm -hmm. She's got her baby, you know, some of that. Um, and so it, it was a little disheartening not unrealistic again that this yeah. could be the case. You can see as time would go on or something like that. You feel like you don't have any friends or like right. of your age. No one, you know, it's all your servants are your age or whatever, and they're your servants and whatever. Right. Um, but it was it was definitely a downer, and I I was hoping that uh, like her like admiration for the king and for what she had managed to achieve here had been enough, you know, to mm -hmm. make her um, not have to yeah. feel like a, like a, a victim or a, some sort of like, you know, m martyr here where I have to like yeah. give everything and I'll, I'll sponge bathe you and all this stuff, you know? Yeah. It was definitely um, a rough example of duty wearing thin mm -hmm. and you know, um, the honeymoon period is clearly over. And I, and I don't think it doesn't mean she doesn't care for Viserys and is genuinely looking to do good and do right mm -hmm. by him and do right by the kingdom. Um, and she's just, you know, a naturally generous person. But yeah, it is, it is tragic um, that we see this sort of like slow degradation of her personality and the quality of her life where she does feel trapped. Um, and we do get this like foreboding sense of exactly what Rhaenyra is trying to avoid. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, yeah, that it, I, I thought that was actually it was tough for me to watch, but it was at the same time like really great storytelling and like juxtaposition against Rhaenyra. Mm -hmm. um, and it sort of also like kind of made you wish she wouldn't be so flighty. Mm. You know, well, I wish she was there for Allison. Exactly. I wish that, I I mean, wish, I wish wish that relationship really, was strong and they were like really in this together. Right, right. You know, it, it made it, it kind of made the tables turn where, you know, a couple of episodes ago, I was, you know, feeling for Rhaenyra when Allison was like, I'm here for you. And yeah. Rhaenyra's like, you absolutely betrayed me and did not tell me these things that were happening. Right. You kept giant secrets from me. And now I feel the opposite where, you know, I'm being made to understand Alicent, feel for her. And now I'm upset that like Rhaenyra's on the other end and like lying to Alicent and keeping truths from her. Yep. Um, so I really, yeah, I really had hope they were going to start genuine reconciliation in this episode. And it just didn't seem like that's going to go well if Rhaenyra's lying. Yep. yep. Um, so my, my actual third thing that bothered me in this episode uh, was Otto again. Okay. Um, just <laughs> just pretending like I have real bad news to deliver. Yeah, it's daughter. so hard to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was like, don't you lie, you tattletale. You love this. You're living for this. 
So I really enjoyed the conversation where Viserys was like, yeah, so I'm going to have to let you go. (laughs) See what you've been doing. And it doesn't mean, like you said before, it doesn't mean that Otto won't be right about some of the things that he's like pushed for in the kingdom. But it was nice to see Viserys be like, you're really trying to handle me here, buddy. And I'm just about done with it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm really hoping that Viserys can just like absolutely wise up and pin the hand on our other friend from the small council. And if he does, I'm going to learn his name. Yeah. (laughs) Hopefully that's the case. Yeah. I agree. Um, Let's see. I know there is. uh, Oh, Alan says Lionel Strong. Lionel Strong. Well, All right. In my repertoire now, Lionel. Got to put it in the, uh, yeah, put in it, the show notes. In, let's see. So we remember for next week, Lionel Strong. And there'll be the one, like, wise Honest member. guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess the other, the, obviously, the other big thing we didn't really address um, that going along with Otto's firing, um, it, it is a condition of Rhaenyra getting married and she accepts her duty. She's going to marry Lainor. Lainor. Yeah. Lainor. Mm-hmm. I don't know the right. correct inflection in there, but she's yeah. going to do it. She's sucking it up. And yep. he doesn't seem too terrible from the like two scenes we, we caught of him in the battle for the step zones. He seems okay. I don't know which one it is. I don't, uh, uh, he was the dragon rider. Oh, okay. Okay. The guy who right. came in on Caraxes. Um, he's like 17 ish looking. So at least he's like appropriately aged, which, mm-hmm. you know, the opening of this episode made fun of like the suitor yeah. freak girl mm-hmm. <laughs> where she, she went from like a 65 year old grandfather to like this 11 year old looking boy who turns out to be way tougher than he looks. I know. I was kind he of a grown ass man. I was half waiting for at some point. All right fine i'll take the punk you know like oh that smart ass yeah to come back and take the kid that just that just you know like that way kind of impressed her was like all right i'll take him that's fine you know yeah i was half waiting for that at some point when she's like all right fine i'll do it you know but yeah uh, he was being all witty and amusing and uh that doesn't really help you when you're faced with the point of a sword mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that shocked me i did not expect that to go that way and i kind of loved it yeah it was fun Little kid got his got his vengeance there. His little comeuppance mm-hmm. on the other guy. Yep. Um. Well, I feel like there is more to say. I can't think of it right now. We definitely covered a lot. Yeah. Um There is uh, a lot of things being set up here that I'm very interested to still see how they pay off. Mm-hmm. I. I am a little worried that it looks like we're probably going to get, I would guess, one more episode before switching cast members. Yeah. I kind of wish we weren't. I mean, I could I obviously think something differently, but unless it's a really big time jump, do we need to have someone that, you know, could could feasibly be anywhere between the age range, you know, if we're talking Rhaenyra, feasibly anywhere between the age range of 14 and 23? or something mm-hmm. like that, anywhere in there. You can't just like age her up a little bit or something, maybe, yeah. you know, how much is the time jump here? Cause it'll be clearly a different person. It'd be the same for Allison. Yeah. No one else is going to age as much. I bet, you know, all these people that are yeah. already full adults that are older, like, well, they, they're not, you know, putting grandpas yeah. in their role. So, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed about it as well. I'm really enjoying these particular actresses uh, in their roles, and I think they're doing fantastic jobs. So, yeah, it's hard to let that go. Yeah. Um, And it's hard to know, you know, obviously what these new new actors will bring. So it's, yeah, it feels a little bittersweet that it's happening. Because we've had them matured up already. Like, Allison Mm -hmm. has been married and had kids. You know, so we see her as older now right. and Rhaenyra now just went to a brothel and mm-hmm. then had sex. So right. we, we, you know, we saw both of she them some experience. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I don't know. I, maybe, maybe I'll 
eat my words here and be like very happy with the new people. But I think that, yeah, it's going to, no, it's, it's a gamble. About it. mm-hmm. It's a gamble for sure. And I'm worried about it too. So mm-hmm. I totally get you. Um, one last thing, very mm-hmm. superficial Damon's haircut. Yay or nay? Nay. I hate nay. it. I hate it. I mean, I don't hate it, but I loved his hair before, honestly. Yeah, it's funny because in the too. early stills, I'm like, Matt Smith, that hair, I don't know. You know, before mm-hmm. way before the show came then, out. Like this but shot now, here where he's in the in the stepstones and he's surrendering and he's got like the cool braids and it's all yeah. working. Yeah. Yeah. No, so it was I wrote sad. I yeah, I did not love it. And then when he appeared in that like dirty, like kind of loose fit suit of armor. Um, not this shot, but he's got another one where he's just like literal armor on and his hair is like tousled and in disarray. He was giving me like Brienne of Tarth vibes. <laughs> he really was. And I just okay, was like, I, I never got that, but yeah, that's not your best look. Like it, mm. I worked for Gwendolyn Christie, like that yeah. for her all worked, but I really, I liked Dan's long hair. Oh, I want to see, um, I want to see a fight now between, him and uh and uh brianne you know like h- how yeah. good of a fighter is he i mean obviously it was pretty skilled to go mm-hmm. in against the crap beater there and all that stuff but he did um win but also lose some contests against uh what, kristen cole right it was him yeah. during yeah. the tourney um so is he really skilled or Right. What by what? What's the scale here? Because obviously, Jamie and uh, Brienne were like, Ultimate, you know, and then yeah. and then also, Pinnacle. what's his face? Uh, the other guy that was protecting Tyrion. Oh, Bronn. Yeah, it was like Bronn, Jamie, uh, you know, Brienne, and yeah. then the Sand Serpent guy. It's like I feel like they were the they were like the fighters that were to be yeah. feared, you know. Yep. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to have that kind of like yardstick to be like, so where where would I know, you power fall rankings? In our game, in your, yeah, in our Game of Thrones, like whole entire universe. Where are yeah. you? Yeah. 